Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and today I'm going to repot a whole lot of my Papiopedalum collection. Now you can see them here behind me soaking in warm water so that it'll be easier to remove them from their pots. And I don't think I made a PAF repot video before so we're going to go through the whole thing. And we're going to start our repotting today with this large plant here, which has been left to soak. Now, this is a no ID path, which I've had for nine years, so it's quite a substantial plant. And the best advice for when to repot Paphiopedalums is after they've finished flowering, and as we can see, this one has the remnants of its flower spike here on top and also when they start to outgrow their pot and you can see that actually we have roots coming down here. Also good to bear in mind is that paths need to be grown moist so you're going to be watering them every time they start to dry out and if something is grown moist then the medium is much more likely to break down quickly and this and some of the ones we're going to repot today have actually been in their medium for four years so that's a lot and it's definitely time to repot now i have here a sterilized pot i'm going to put it in a transparent one with a kind of cone at the base a sterilized scissors and a just a bowl here for the debris so i guess the first thing to do is to try and take this plant out of its pot, which we do by just giving it a gentle squeeze. And I can feel already that this is going to come away quite easily. Now it seems to have a good root system from here, but we shall see. And oh, just to let you know, I'm doing this job in February and spring. So, which is generally a good time for repotting orchids. Now I'm just trying to move it and there out it comes. Okay, brilliant. Now this pot here is going to get <laughs> is going to get washed and re-sterilized because I'm actually going to up pot one of the other ones into this. And now with that in mind, I'm just going to start trying to Move, remove the medium and it wants to come away there's the label we'll just take out so that's good just removing as best i can i see some degraded roots already but i see a lot of good ones so that's good news and just keep working away here. Now, I'm just going to remove the stake that I had in here for the flower. And out it comes. And then just worrying away the bark and the polystyrene chips, which we have in here and the sphagnum which we had at the top and we will see what we're left with in terms of a root system. As you can see here what's happened with this plant is that it's produced many fans over the course of its lifetime and all of the ones in here which were green and produced flowers have actually died back but for some reason we've got this little funny one at the back which is strange <laughs> um, because most of the fans are at the front and we have actually one, two, three, four fans at the front if we include the new growth here, which I'm going to be careful of not to break. And now I'm just spraying the surface with a little bleach solution and we're going to have a look at the roots of my path. Now, 
if you're used to Oncidium or Cattleya roots, the first thing you need to do when you see your Paphiopedilum root system is not to panic. Paths naturally have fewer roots than Cattleya's or Oncidium's, so that the fact that there are fewer roots is not anything in itself to worry about. But what you need to look out for, as with any orchids, is which roots are actually firm and which are mushy, like that one here. And with your sterilized scissors, what you're then going to do is just remove any mushy roots. Where the roots are firm, leave them, but cut off the bits at the end, which are mushy. And with that in mind, I'm just going to tidy up my plant. Now, some of them just come off without cutting. Okay, so this little back fan has actually come off of its own accord. And that's fine because what I really want to do is to reduce the rhizome size. So you can see that we have a rhizome that has stood the plant in good stead. It's flowered, it's produced fans all the way along here. But now this back part isn't doing very much and it even doesn't have roots attached. It's got this mushy one here and that mushy one there. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the rhizome round about here and just remove that back piece. And there we go. Okay, and actually most of the ro mushy roots are on this portion here, so we'll take it out. Uh, while I have a scissors, I will remove old spikes that have flowered here. And the most recent one, which is here, as close to the base as I can. And now I'm just continuing to remove any mushy roots. Now we can see that some of the roots, like these ones here, they are quite firm and they're even slightly white. And can you see this kind of coating that we have here on the root? And this is specific to path roots. They have a kind of coating on them which looks like it's got sphagnum moss on it. It's like little remnants of sphagnum moss that are stuck there. But no, that's not what it is at all. It's just the the plant's roots natural coating. Now these ones are firm and good. This one is firm and good. This one is firm and good. So despite finding some degraded roots, I think the root system on this particular plant isn't too bad at all. And it's just due for a repot. And here is my root system once I've cut off all the mushy roots. And the surprise is that this root system is now less than it was. So if I were to put it into this pot, the originally intended one, it looks too big for it. So what I'm going to do really is to just repot this orchid in its original pot, which I've now washed out and sterilized. And even that, it looks a bit big for this particular path. However, there's so much top growth. I just feel that this plant is going to put out roots and fill up this pot in the shortest time, despite at face value, this pot being a tiny bit too big. Okay, so let's mix the compost. So first up, I'm going to use some bark. And we need smaller bark for halves, probably about this size is good. And I'm going to actually mix up for all of the halves I'm repotting now. So I'm just putting it into this pot to get an idea of the size. Oops, so one bark, two parts bark, three parts bark, and half a part sphagnum. So these are plants that really like their moist 
mixture so we're going to put that in here I don't think I need to chop it I think it's um, small enough as is but I guess I could just break up some of the bigger pieces here and then we also need half a part perlite and perlite is great for making sure that some the roots don't get too soggy really and I want about half of perlite now this is a rough measurement okay you know depending on your environment or your particular pack you may decide to adjust this and yeah so it goes okay so that's everything in there and the next step is to just kind of mix it up really really well which is a bit tricky in a bowl that's um, that isn't quite big enough for all of the mix that i put in but we'll manage we'll get there and also i'm going to add oyster grit which is something that's very good for giving plants calcium now if you live in a rural area you can get this very easily in the shops that sell farming products much cheaper than sending away for it and um, it's used you feed it to chickens and it helps make their beaks and egg shells firm and here is the mix that i'm going to use to pot on my path so, and here's the pot, which is the original pot it came in, like I said. And so I'm going to start off by just putting a bit of medium down at the base, like this. And then just gently lower the roots into the pot. If, if they are rigid, then what you can do is just turn slightly to get them to settle a little bit better without breaking, turning the pot. And in this case, what I want to do is leave this new growth near the front of the pot, the part with the most space. So I am going to move the plant back on this side, on the old side to the back of the pot. And that is how we are going to attempt to pot it. So <laughs> I'll just hold it steady here with my hand as I now maneuver medium in and around our plant. And putting some at the back first. If I put it a lot the back first, then I can move the plant back in the pot. Tapping to make the medium settle. And pressing down with my fingers a bit. Okay, and I think that is it. The other important thing I want to do is to top dress this pot. And as you can see, this the front is the new growth. And what very often happens with paths is that the new growth comes up from the medium just a little bit which means its roots are flailing around and not touching the medium and not getting adequate moisture so i like to top dress my paths with some sphagnum moss and that's what i'm going to do now and here is the sphagnum which i just put all around the top of the plant and this will just make sure that any new roots i mean not burying anything obviously but it means that any new roots that come out of that new growth have somewhere to sink into and put a little bit around the back as well and that is how i pot my paths and now i'm just going to give it a watering and it's good to go. So here we go. I've potted it in a, in a transparent pot, which I find good for seeing what's going on with the roots. And what I then do is put this transparent pot 
in a clay pot and that just blocks the light from the roots and stops mosses and the like growing and I just find it's a system that works well and the good news is since I'm using the same transparent pot that this was on originally I can use the same clay pot. <laughs> Welcome to the middle of the video. You've just seen how I repot my paths but if you want to see the scenario played through four more times with my four other plants that may give rise to different situations, then stay tuned. And now we're going to repot this second path. And it's hard to know what's going on with this particular one because it's not in a transparent pot. So we can't really see how the roots are, but I do plan on putting it in a transparent pot. Here we have the discard bowl from before just squeezing very gently here and then we have a look at the root system on this one also came out quite easily and the medium kind of falls away and you know what I'm going to hurry up this process because we're going to repot five paths today so <laughs> I guess I'll just hurry up the mundane parts that we've already covered with the first one and if we find anything exciting I will be sure to point it out to you. Now this plant is also a mature plant that has flowered many times. We've had a spike here, we've had a spike there in where my thumb is, we've had another one here and in fact we have a spike at the moment and this is a sequential flower that just keeps on flowering for the longest time so it's actually you know hard to find an opportune moment to repot if you're waiting for it to finish flowering then you might be waiting a very long time okay I'm gonna give this a little rinse under the tap And look, we have two plants. That was not the plan. Well, all the bark is off and the rotten ones have been removed. And this is the second division from this particular plant. And in fact, the roots on this one look better than the roots on the other. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pot the two of them together. Because I really don't want another <laughs> Pinocchio. Because I've had to remove several roots, in fact, the system isn't as good as I thought it would be, which means I have to use a smaller pot than anticipated. So I have great fun re-sterilizing and washing and all that um, to get a new pot. And so I'm going to put this in here. Just trying to work out where the new growth is coming from on this particular plant. And we... I guess it's actually you know it's a multiple growth I think on this particular plant because it's so old we've got something happening here we've got something happening over here and actually the plant is flowering from this fan here although this seems the oldest part of the plant so I am going to take a view and just pot it like that and also the other one, the smaller growth. Here it's clearer what's going on. Here at the back we have the older fan and at the front we have the newer one. So I'm going to put the newer one facing the outside of the pot. So I'll just place these two in here like that together and start putting bark around them. And in the center, I'm just going to make sure there's a bit of space between these two divisions. J 
just in case one decides to start, I don't know, shooting from the back. And for the final thing, I'm just going to place some moss around the top of the plant. And this will just keep the humidity in and help new growths, new roots, reach down into the medium. Okay, and that's path number two, all repotted. And next up we have Path Henriana, Jewelry Pot. This is one I've had for eight years. And actually what there is of them is in reasonably good shape, kind of firm. And you can see that this is quite a small plant and it was definitely over potted. So what we're going to do is put it in a smaller spot pot than it was in originally. And actually, if you look back at my previous video on paths, you'll see that I talked about having this one in too big a pot. And well, there you go. So um, we will just kind of put it in here, kind of wrap the roots around and kind of twist to make sure that the roots go with the contours of the pot rather than breaking and now I'm going to just put in the medium Hopefully that will put down some new growths and fill up this pot in a short period of time. Okay, let's put him over here. And next up is Deep Pearl Pink, which I've had for many years too. And this is a regular flower. And out it comes. And let's just see what's happening with its roots. Quite a big plant, but we'll see from the roots whether or not it needs to go into a bigger pot because I'm detecting a theme here today. Okay, so a plant with multiple growths on top and with a semi-decent root system. And this one is going into the same size pot. I think it's going to be just fine in here.
And that, I believe, is number four. And here's my final plant. So this one is called um, Leanum. And as usual, putting the names up on the screen. And it's been soaking for a while. We're just giving it a bit of a squeeze to loosen it in the pot and hopefully it'll come out easily. It's going to be a surprise what the roots are like on this because it's not a transparent pot. So I don't know. It seems a little bit reluctant. And here we go. And that looks like a decent root system. And not a bad root system on this, not loads of roots, but the ones that are there are fairly good. And I think I'm just going to put this one back into the same sized pot that it was in. So I'm gather up the leaves. And that is the final path to be potted today. Let me just put the label back in. So there you go. One, two, three, the small one, four, and this one here. And that brings me to the end of my path repotting video, which I hope you found useful. And I think having dealt with five different paths, there's one scenario in there that's going to fit in with whatever scenario you encounter when you repot your paths. Thank you very much for watching as always, and check back for lots more orchid and plant videos. Bye.